Hello and welcome. This is a new lecture in your course, Linux for Absolute Beginners by Idionics. My name is Ahmed, and in this section, we are going to discuss Linux command line. Now, the first question that pops into the heads of most users who are new to Linux is, why do you use the command line in the first place? Now, we have seen how we have systems like Ubuntu that have flashy GUIs. They have a lot of programs that use the GUI. They have LibreOffice, for example. They have as we said, Audacity and other production software that makes the most of the average user's job done. So why do we have to use the command line? Why do we have to even learn about the command line? And most of those users are coming from environments like Microsoft Windows, where the command line is actually not of much use to the average user. But in Linux, things are different. In Linux, the command line is one of the most powerful features of the system itself. Actually, anything that is done through the GUI can be done through the command line. Actually, the GUI application in itself is just a cover to the command that is done behind the scenes on the command line. So anything, like anything that you can be that can be done in the GUI, can be done even more effectively in the command line. Moreover, the command line will offer you more options and more ways to execute a program, and you can also put the and you can also put multiple programs in what's called a shell script, which is just a file containing a number of commands that get executed one after another without any user intervention, which of course is an excellent way to automate complex tasks. And it's true, yes, that command line may be a little hard to grasp at first, however, it is the worst time and effort to learn it. If you experience with the command line, if you practice the commands that you're going to learn in this section and in this course in general, you will find that the command line is a lot more fun to use even more than GUI applications. Now let's get started. How to get a command line. We have seen before how to launch a command line in Ubuntu. Let's log into the system like this and as we said from this search window you will type term or cmd whatever you like and you will have this program called terminal and we have also ux term and x term these are other programs that provide the similar functionality to terminal they all give you this text interface this is the command line this is where you can communicate with the system using the command line and as we have mentioned before you can also use the text mode environment in ubuntu like this by pressing ctrl alt f1 2 3 4 or 5 or 6 and you can do that and once you do that you are inside the text mode directly you are not in the GUI mode of, Li of Linux or Ubuntu you are inside the text only mode and you can type any command that you want to here just the same as you will type it in the GUI terminal application but of course the difference is that in the GUI you are working inside the environment you're just opening a program called terminal this program gives you a shell a shell window while in the text mode environment this is the actual environment you're working with it it, it is a text only environment okay and actually there is a third way where we, where we can get a command line in Linux and that is if you are logging in remotely using a command line only client like for example, most people who are working on Windows use a program called PuTTY or P-U-T-T-Y. If you have a look here at this URL, PuTTY.org, this is where you can download the program. It's a freeware actually, and you can use it to connect remotely to your Linux system using the, its IP address or name. And once you log in, you will have a text-only environment. So this is the third way where you can get a text mode in Linux. And once you're done with your session, you can end the terminal session or the command line session either by typing exit or control D. So if we have a look here, if I type exit like this, I will terminate the program. And also if I type control D, I will terminate the program. And if you are in a text only mode environment, typing exit, of course, will not end the program because this is not a program. This is the environment itself. So typing exit or control D will just log you out of the system because as we said, this is your environment. Typing exit or control D means that you end the environment session. You end your session in this environment. So the system just logs you out and gives you this login screen where you can enter again your user and password and log in again to the system. So this is an important difference between the GUI terminal application and the text mode is that the terminal application is an application that will get terminated when you press Ctrl D. 
unlike the text mode environment. Now let's talk about the path. When you are in the terminal application, or in the text mode environment of, of Linux or Ubuntu, let's have it again here, and then you type a command like, for example, ls. ls, as we said, is a command that is used to display the contents of your current directory, and it can also display the contents of another directory if you passed this current this other directory as an argument like this. So I pass in slash opt, slash opt here contains two directories. One is called Google, and the other is called this VBox Guest Editions. Okay, so I typed ls, and it just worked. But actually, things in Linux don't work that straightforward. In order to execute a command, you have to give the system its full path in order for this command to get executed correctly. When I say the path, I mean the location of this program relative, either relative to your current location or relative to root. Let's have a little illustration here. Consider that this is the file system tree. This is actually called, technically called the file system tree. Here is the root of the file system. You can you can think of it as an inverted tree. Usually a tree is, it, because a tree usually has its roots at the bottom. Actually it always has its root at the bottom, but in the file system, this tree is inverted. So the root is at the top and the stem and the leaves and other parts of the tree are underneath it. So this is the root of our file system tree. It is denoted by this slash symbol. This is the root and under it, under this root we have other first level directories like these. So we have here home, var, media and of course other file systems, other directories. And if you want to type the full location of this directory, just type slash which is the root followed by the name of the directory because as we said this is the first level of the tree. So slash home or slash var or slash media will get you inside home, var or media respectively. But when you move another step downwards or another step deeper in the tree, like for example if you want to navigate into a directory inside the directory that is called home, for example the user Ahmed, because as we said home contains the home directories of the users on the system, so if you want to examine the directory of one of those users, now you are two levels inside. So when you want to mention the full location of this directory, which is called Ahmad, you will say slash home followed by another slash then Ahmad. Slash here acts as a separator. It separates directories from each other. And you can go as deep as you want inside this directory, just add a slash before each level you enter in. So this is called a path. Slash home slash Ahmad or slash home slash John or slash var slash log or slash media slash CD-ROM is called a path. And let's have a look here. This is a file system that has been mounted. Remember in the previous section we have talked about the file systems and we said that CD-ROMs and DVD-ROMs have their own file systems that can uh, that must be mounted on the on, on some on some directory in order to be used. So when mounting a file system to a directory, you just tell the system that you want this directory to be your path or your way to get into the file system that has been mounted. So here I'm using slash media slash CD-ROM as my way to enter the CD-ROM file system where I can see the files and folders for the CD that I have inserted into the system. Okay, so back to our system. Here if I go to for example slash opt and let's make ls again. Let's go inside Google. Let's type ls again and I have Chrome. Let's type ls again. Okay, I have a lot of files and folders. Now, where am I? Let's read the path that gets printed automatically in my prompt screen. This is printed for me by the bash shell. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the bash shell in a moment. Let's see, slash opt, this is the slash, this is the outermost directory, this is root. Followed by opt, the first level, then Google, second level, then Chrome, this is the third level in the tree. This is called the path. You never read or hear somebody talking about a path in Linux or Unix this is the path. It is just the location of the directory or the file relative to root. But this is not the only way where I can navigate to a directory. I can also navigate to it relative to my current directory. Okay. Whenever you want to find your current directory, you will type pwd, which is short for print working directory. Once I press enter, I will find my current directory which is slash opt slash google slash chrome. Now from inside this directory I can move to another directory relative to this directory by just typing cd for example and then I'll type 
dot 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 here refers to my parent directory so i am inside chrome my parent directory is google then followed by slash then i will type enter now as you can see here i moved immediately to the first directory here to the parent directory which is google now if i want to enter a chrome again i don't have to type cd opt google chrome which of course will work but i needn't type all this in order to navigate to chrome which is just inside my current directory i can type just chrome like this and i'm in now let's go up two levels dot dot followed by dot dot so i'm moving to the parent directory of chrome which is google then the parent directory of google which is opt and then another slash and i will go inside the box guest editions now you see i have completely changed my current directory to another directory but i did not mention the full path of this directory relative to root however i mentioned its path relative to my current location like this okay i move to the parent directory then the parent of the parent directory then from this directory which is opt i cd into vbox guest additions so these are the two ways by which you can navigate to directories on the system if you want to execute a file linux must have the full path of this file either absolute or relative in order for this file to get executed so for example let's say i want to launch the firefox browser and as we said before this is one of the ways where you can launch a program is that you can launch it through the command line provided that you are in a gui environment so if i want to launch firefox i will have to enter the full path of firefox which happened to be in slash usr slash bin and then firefox like this when i press enter i will have firefox open as you can see now let's close it and this and the command line is returned to me now this is not the only way by which i can launch firefox browser i can also type firefox like this and it will give me the very same output now why is that that is because linux has something called the path variable the path variable is and a variable here means a container of data a variable in programming in general means a container of data so in linux we have something called path and path contains data this data is a number of directories let's have a look at it echo echo is just a command that is used to display the argument passed to it so if i can so if i said echo ahmad like this it will just display ahmad but if i pass in a variable like this it will display the contents of this variable and variables in the bash shell are preceded by a dollar sign if you want to reference a variable you will have to proceed it by a dollar sign so if i want to see the contents of the path variable i will type echo followed by space followed by dollar sign and path in all caps like this if i press enter you will see that it contains one two three four five six seven eight nine directories like this the path variable may differ from one location from one system to another the path variable just contains the locations in which the system will automatically look when you type a command that is not in its full path now what does that mean when i type firefox like this why did the system launch the browser because the location of firefox which is slash usr slash bin is available in this path as you can see here usr bin is available in my path variable and directories are separated by columns as you can see so usr bin is separated by the directory that precedes it by a column and it is separated from the directory that follows it by another column okay so as soon as you type a program without its full path the system will look at the path variable and see whether it has a program or an executable file with that name in those paths or not so it looked at user local as bin found nothing user local bin found nothing user s bin found nothing user bin yes it found firefox application and it launched it for us and this sometimes is a source of problems that are hard to debug for example sometimes users install two versions of a program they install a version in slash usr slash bin and then they have a better version or a newer version and they install it in slash bin for example 
and when they launch the application by its name they are surprised to find that the older version is the one that gets launched that is because usr bin us-usr slash bin comes before slash bin in their path variable so if you have two programs with the same name one in usr bin and the other in slash bin the one in usr bin will get launched first regardless of whether the other one is a newer or a better version the system will not care it will just launch the first instance of this application in this directory because it has been found here it will not even bother continue to search in the rest of the path variable it will just launch the program and that's it so beware when you install a program in a directory that is present in your path variable make sure that it does not exist in another directory now, what if you have a program or an executable file that is in your current directory how are you going to get it executed for example let's say we have here i'll make a quick program that will just display hello let's echo hello world this is just an example of a shell script now what if I want to execute this program if I just type hello.sh it won't get executed it will tell me command not found although I have this command in my current directory it's called hello.sh and it can be executed but when I typed hello.sh like this it was not executed why because it is not in my path this directory that I'm in slash home slash Ahmed is not in my path so should I have to put this in my path in order for this program to work well that would be an option a much easier option for this is to mention the full path of this program relative to my current location as we said I can give the system the path of the program either absolute like this slash home slash Ahmed slash hello sh and of course it's gonna execute or a much easier solution is to use the relative location the relative location here will be dot and dot here refers to the current directory dot in Linux refers to the current directory you are in so if I say dot I'm referring to slash home slash Ahmad followed by a slash followed by hello that sh and if I press enter I will execute this program so again dot dot refers to the home directory so if i'm using dot dot i will go to my previous or my parent directory which is slash home dot refers to the current directory so if i type cd dot i'm actually i'm technically moving nowhere i am moving inside my current directory dot is my current directory and the only situation where dot is useful is when you want to execute an a program or a command inside your current directory because you will have to pass in the relative the path to the program or to the file relative to your current location so it's going to be dot followed by a slash followed by your command or file now in the next lecture we're going to see how you can run applications in the background so see you next